Today we're going to be talking about gun setup, primers used, how to prep your panel, and do some blending. We're starting out today with panel prep. Making sure your panel is appropriately scuffed. Whoa, as I trip over it. Making sure everything is scuffed that you are going to prime. What we have here is a panel that from here down, you can see has already been primed. It, this is all done in 220 grit dry. And then here up where it's already been painted, we have wet sanded this with 600 grit. The thing that you guys need to know is that we had some questions on can you just spot prime if you have a filler breakthrough or bare metal breakthrough. Yes, you can. You just need to make sure that the area that you are going to prime, it is sanded beyond where you are going to be priming that area. In this case, we have wet sanded the entire thing and then we came in and did all of our body work and primering before, but we have one more quick little prime where we had some breakthroughs and seal it and then you have the option of masking something and then priming and then what you're left with is a hard line. What I do want to mention is that when you are sanding those lines, if you just wet sand and it feels smooth but it is a defined line, when you go to paint it, even though you can't feel it, it will show just a, a very slight deviation where you could see where there was a mask line. So it is important to wet sand out your line enough to where you won't see it. That's why you have the jagged edges on that area. But this thing is completely uh, prepped. It is wax and greased already. We took wax and grease remover. We took a micro, uh, microfiber, wiped it down. I like microfibers. Some guys are against them. The big thing is that you're always using a brand new microfiber. I like them because a microfiber holds the moisture of the wax and grease longer than some of the wipes. I'm restoration, I'm not in the collision side and we don't do a ton of prep as it is because we only do so many cars a year. However, once you get that down, you can use a tack cloth, make sure there's no dust, and then we can go back and mix up some primer. This is the primer that we use. This is the VP2050 from the Vibrance collection that um, PPG sells. It's more of their higher end PPG stuff. It's not like the shop line stuff, even though sometimes that may be fine for your guys' personal projects. There's gonna be a lot of guys that ask me all the time, what do you think of this primer? What do you think of that primer? And truth be told, I have always been a PPG guy. I don't have a ton of experience shooting other primers, although we have shot them here and there very seldom. The thing that I like about this is you're using one product to do everything that everybody else is using two, three, four products for. The reason that that's cool is because if you have bare metal, if you have fiberglass, if you're going over body filler, it, this primer covers the basis for all. This is a two to one to half mix ratio, meaning it is two parts of the primer in the gallon to one part of the VH7050, um, they call this a catalyst, I always call it hardener. And then you also, we use the D8767 reducer. That is what they recommend per the TDS sheet. And the other cool thing is, if you do reduce this 211 instead of 212, meaning you're using just a slight bit more of a reducer, you can actually seal the car at the final which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're just trying to seal it and get a nice smooth coat. Um, this product, instead of using like a polyester, this is not only a DTM epoxy, but it is also a high build. So this stuff, along with the, heart, the catalyst, this is molasses, it is super thick. You need at least a 1.8 to a 2.2 tip for your spray gun to be able to spray that. And although I am an Iwata guy, I will not shoot this stuff through my Iwata because epoxy primers will start to break down the coating of the gun. I actually really like this Walcom. These are made in Italy. They're very affordable. I think they're only like a couple hundred bucks, at least the last time I bought this thing. It sprays incredibly nice. This one we like is a 1.8 and 
It'll do everything you guys need it to do. It'll fill pinholes, it'll take care of your metal spots, seal up fiberglass. It is an amazing primer and the best part about it is it doesn't shrink down like all the other ones. I know you're gonna hear guys say things don't shrink, blah, blah, blah. They all have a level of shrinkage, but this particular primer is done shrinking in three days. Um, Colton Davidson from Linear Blocks did a test on this stuff. He actually weighed it on a panel and it quit losing weight at three days. So even if you're in a crunch to do something, obviously this isn't gonna be your best bet for like the collision industry, but when you're talking high-end restoration, this stuff is absolutely amazing and you can block it way down just like you would a polyester. The other thing too, is that the price of this is pricey. You guys are gonna freak, but the thing is, if you are using the normal standard where you buy an epoxy primer, then you do your body filler, and then you buy a polyester, and then you buy a urethane at the end, you're using several different products to get to the end result, and it becomes confusing. One, especially for the guy starting out, and two, you just added like four other products to the confusion, and if you had a failure in any one of those other products, you wouldn't know where you had the failure. With this, you're narrowing it down to just this primer and just body filler. It's a huge benefit. The amount of money that you're going to actually save by not buying four other products, you buy one and it's a very high quality. So we're gonna take you guys in the booth. We're gonna mix this up in our cup, two one one. So that way it's more of a sealer. It's not two one half, it's not quite as thick. And then we are going to show you guys how to set up your gun appropriately so you get a really nice finish on your panel. Okay, when it comes to gun setup, your top adjustment is for your fan. From narrow to wide, pretty straightforward. As far as this one goes, this is your needle adjustment on how much paint is going to flow out of the gun onto your panel. And then you have your air pressure on your regulator and or your other adjustment on the gun. When you guys are starting and you have no clue where to start with whatever gun that you're going to use, any good painter should be able to grab any gun, even if it's a Harbor Freight gun, and at least pull off something decent. Now, I will say that Walcom, for the bang of the buck, is probably just as good as any other SADA or IWATA gun there is. You guys can argue with that all you want, but that's the truth. Start with your needle dialed all the way in to where no paint comes out. Take a test panel, and then get six to eight inches away from your panel. Here's where everybody's going to be different, and especially when you're starting, everybody tends to be very robotic and slow, and that's why you end up getting runs and sags everywhere. Well, the part of the problem that you guys get runs and sags and orange peel and all these issues is because you don't take the time to set this gun up. So how you do that is go per a gun manufactured specification on air pressure, whether it be 20 to 30 PSI, I personally shoot right around 28 to 30 PSI as just a baseline. And I tend to shoot it, it doesn't really matter what gun I use, it's just kind of habit. Um, but when you go over your test panel, you're going to be looking at the paint. A lot of guys stare at the gun, stare at the paint and look at what your texture is doing. If it's looking too globby, you either need to do one of two things, dial back on your paint or go faster. There's all kinds of different ways that you can adjust. How close you are, how far you are, does it look too dry, does it need to be closer to make it look wetter? But if you start with this thing dialed in to where you don't have excessive paint and you're just using a test panel, you can then do a half a turn at a time and do a pass. And then if you think that's too dry or too wet, just keep dialing that thing in. You want to be pulling back on the trigger all the way to the stop that you're setting. That way everything all the way through your job is consistent. And if you practice on your car, panel, whatever it may be, in the primer stage, pretend that it's clear coat. Pretend that it's candies and pearls and every pass that you're going to be doing is going to cause a run if you overlap that area too many times. Also, when you loosen the tip of the gun, the way that this is directed will bring your fan either right side up 
or lateral if you spin it and then tighten it back down. Maybe you're just trying to get an edge and you can come through and adjust wherever your gun pattern needs to be. Don't be the guy who sets that thing and always forgets to, to change it because if you're going the length of the car and then you try to get an edge and you just hit it, but now you're flowing all that paint onto a very small area, you're going to get a run. Try to think about the details as you paint to be one perfect droplet of paint or primer, whatever it is you're using that's nice and even across the whole thing. Otherwise, you're gonna get uh, issues where you have a run or orange peel or it's too dry and it's not adhering. You want it to just wet out after the second overlap of a 50% coat, meaning when you do one pass, you overlap down 50% and you come back through and walk the whole panel because this, we're just going to spot prime. And that's kind of what this video is directed on. But for this one, I'm gonna spot prime in my, my filler that's showing, and then we're going to go just beyond our 220 scratches. So this whole front is sealed in and we don't have to worry about any of the excessive sand scratches from the 220. Everything on the back of the panel is already 600. And once this completely dries in our three day period, we can then wet sand this whole panel out. But you're trying to get it as smooth as you can right out of the gate. That way you have less stuff to sand out. So we're going to go into, we're gonna put on a mask. You guys definitely wanna be wearing a mask with this stuff, have good ventilation. If you're in a garage, put a fan going outside and make sure you're not just using a dust filter. Use the charcoal filters. This stuff is not good for your health. It's not good for your eyes. I know uh, I should have the helmet and the full breathing system, but we're working with what we got at the time. So we're gonna get the booth fired up and we'll show you guys some passes. All right, we've already come through and we've sprayed everything that we wanted to spray for this panel. Now, when it comes to a blend, let's say this is not even primer, let's say this is base coat and it's a metallic. If you're trying to blend a panel from one end to the other, you have to, you can't just stop in the center when it comes to base and clear. You have to actually wet sand the entire panel all the way from edge to edge. And then when you actually go to paint it, you're going to be blending. And when I say blending, you're going to be feathering out. The other thing you wanna make sure is I always leave the air on, that way you're only pulling back with the paint on the gun. And then the reason that I have a paintbrush on here is that a lot of guys will hold the gun sloppy. If the more you can practice at the very beginning of holding the gun perpendicular to the panel, 
you're getting an even pattern. If you are getting lazy or your arm's getting tired and the gun starts tilting, it's only hitting heavier on the side of the brush that's going to be touching the panel. And that's how you have to always think about it. So always have your gun directly perpendicular with whatever shape. If you have a very curved car, you need to be curving with the car, trying to stay the same distance the entire time. So if you had base coat that you wanted to blend, or even a primer edge, you don't want it super heavy right here where you end. In other words, I like to paint really close. And if you came in and just stopped and didn't blend it, if you guys notice, it does have a little bit of gray hue, and that's also going to help you when you come back and wet sand this panel out, it will feather between the two so you don't have such a hard edge. If we have been training you guys on doing filler so evenly and perfect the way that you block it, when you go to block out this primer, you want it to be as even as you can as well. So take that into consideration when you prime that if you have it this way, it's loading the primer up or the paint up more so on one end of the other. So consistency is key through this entire process. If you have a small spot that you want to spot prime instead of doing half of a fender, you would basically just come in and prime that spot and whisk out your edges. We whisk out body filler, whisk out your edges on the primer too. Just make sure you have everything sanded in that area so nothing uh, does not adhere. Because let's say you're putting a graphic through this thing. If you go to pull your tape and you didn't have it sanded from like here this way, it's going to rip all the paint off. That's also why you'll have a lot of painters that won't even want to touch anybody else's work that's already done the body work. That's why we don't do it. If I can't guarantee that the adhesion is there, you're just looking for problems because we've had so many cars in past years when we were learning this ourselves that you would just have delamination problems all over the board. Even a Brillo pad will help you guys for adhesion. So. The more you go through this process, the more you'll understand that the details in every one of these things matters. I hope this helped you guys with gun setup. If you guys have any comments or questions, put them in the comment section. Hope you guys liked it. Please share, it helps the channel. And we will have some of the description of this stuff in the descriptions of the, the video itself. Continue to learn and share what you know, guys. We'll see you next week. When I'm talking about feathering primer, I'm talking about as you prime, you bring the gun out in this motion. And then as you are coming out, you are letting off of the paint. You're not letting the air stop. You always want to be on the air, but as you come back in, you are blending it back in. Thank you.